sure this episode was like 31 minutes long. It felt like it was 10 minutes, 15 minutes long because this shit went by so fucking fast. But one thing about it and two things for sure, what I am glad about and what I'm excited about with this season is that they are giving us a little bit of balance. They're showing us what they're chasing. They're giving us real life issues. And to top it all off, they're giving us a drama all at the same time. So all the shit that y'all be calling boring, I actually like to see that. It's a bit of a balance. When you have too much drama on the show, it becomes draining, a.k.a. Merit the Medicine. So, yeah, you know, we like the drama. We like all that. But give me a balance. I want to see more than just hoes arguing, fighting, talking about rumors and all this other dumb shit. Number two, a couple of weeks ago when they had their little promo slots and stuff, they had a YouTuber by the name of Chocolate Beauty. I actually subscribed to her because of the promo. But, bitch, why y'all ain't giving me and giving you the real tea some of that shine, too? We really love y'all show, and we review your show, and we're just here for the product. We love your shit. Not, not just us, but Yas Bitch TV, L Teddy 27, Every Reviews, Really Be TV. Hell, give us, that little, give us a little plot, too, so we can promote our shit, too. I'm just saying. No disrespect to the girl that got her promo because... Because of this, because of that promo, I subscribe to her goddamn channel. So I'm never a hater, but bitch, give us some of that damn promo too, goddamn it. We got some shit to promote too. Hell, I got a podcast coming out. I need that promotion. But that's another story that I just had to say that, you know, real quick. But we're going to get right on into the review. So we're going to open it over Kane, my boy King Kane. He styled a fashion show. And I think it's one of those fashion shows for women that's going through some things and dealing with all of that stuff. And one thing about it. With Kane, he's all about his business, he's all about his line, and he's all about his fashion. And one thing about it, <coughs> and I know I keep saying one thing about it, but I can't help it. That's a Mississippi thing. But, however, he didn't just style me one time. I don't know if he saw what I had on for my birthday or not, because it's on my Instagram and it's on my community wall, by the way. But, you know, I want to see what, what he could do for me. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm going to wear that sweater he gave me um, about a year and a half ago. That um, he gave me when I interviewed him in person when I came to Dallas back in 2018. I'm aware that on one of my reviews of this show. But um, yeah. But I wore it on. I wore it last season. But I'm aware it again. Just, to, just so y'all can see what he got. But um, yeah. It's nice to see him doing that. You know. And him just doing his thing. I want to see him soar. And you know. People really can say whatever they want to say about Kane, but he is one of the biggest characters on the show. Everybody like him, and that's just what it is. And, and he was always the one that I clung to the most, you know, which is why I speak to him outside of the show. So, love Cedric Kane. Love him, love him, love him. So, we're getting to Dior. Fine ass Dior with the red hair. Give me Kool-Aid. Give me K. Michelle VSOP with the red hair. You better do it, Dior, because you can do me. Anyway, so, um... I'm not even going to talk about the other stuff that he was talking about. I want to get into the meat and the potatoes of this thing. And that's when he was talking about his um, relationship, strained relationship with his father. And one thing about it, uh, I know I keep saying one thing about it. I need to stop it. It's just a habit. I, I honestly feel him on it. I do. I really do. Because of the simple fact that I too had issues with my father. Now, although me and my dad are in a much better place these days, I had issues with my dad. But I don't think my issues with my father were the same issues that Dior got with his. My issues with my father was because he wasn't a constant in my life. He wasn't there for me the way that he was with his other kids. Being that he lives in Jersey, I live in Mississippi, me and my sister does, we did not have the luxury that the other four kids had. They had the father, they had the auntie, they had the grandmother. We didn't get to have that. So because we didn't get to have that, I resented that for a long time and took it out on my siblings and took it out on everybody else to the point to where I sat here on this very YouTube channel, made a video going off on all of their ass, and it wasn't the right thing to do. At the time, it wasn't. But, of course, I was only, what, 21, 22 years old when I did that. So, I wasn't thinking clearly. At, at age 31, I would have never done that. But, you live and you learn. And if it wasn't for that video, me and him probably still wouldn't even be talking. I have flown to Jersey maybe three times over the last two years to see my dad. So, with that being said, me and my dad are in a better place. And listening to Dior and the story that he told about how he, how he was stranded and how his daddy pulled up and left him there... That was fucked up, and I was upset for Dior. What kind of father would do something like that to their own goddamn child? You know what I mean? Like, 
I would prefer, and I know that I'm one of the main people that are always talking about therapy. You know, since I've been going, you know, you need to go talk to a therapist. You need to go talk to a mental health specialist. But I'm not just saying that just be saying that. Sometimes talking to a person that's unbiased, that doesn't know you, that doesn't know anybody in the situation, could really come along and help you out and help with the communication. Because at the end of the day, that's still your father and anything could happen. So, Dior, I want you to know that I really, really um, appreciate you sharing your story because there's a lot of gays. They have father issues. Sometimes our fathers are not accepting of our lifestyles and sexuality. Luckily for me, when me and my daddy um, made amends and I came out to him, he was very accepted. He was more accepted than anybody else in my life. He was just like my little brother, cool as a cucumber, didn't give a fuck. As long as I was okay, he didn't give a damn. So I, I long for that for you, um, Dior, and I want you to know that I understand that, and there's a lot of people out there that understand your fucking story and, uh, and agrees with your story and feels what you're saying, so I'm glad you put it out there, and I am just, real talk, I'm glad you put it out there, and I think that that was something that everybody needed to hear. Trust and believe it. I felt you on all levels with that shit. So, um, Reese is about to do a book, and he said it ain't gonna be no double space. Reese stay read Markel, okay? Like, I don't give a fuck what nobody said about Reese. Like I said, I have this hot and cold thing with Reese. You know, one minute I'll be ready to read Big Mama thing, but in the next minute I warm up to Lil' Kim. And I don't, you know, it's not, Reese is the person that I don't really dislike, but it's like I'm in the middle, like, bitch, you, you pissing me off. Or the next day, bitch, I love you. Like, you know, I love you, bitch. Like, that's how Reese is, you know? And right now, I'm feeling him right now. And he be reading the fuck out of Markel. And another thing with Reese, I did not know that I was older than Reese. Because Reese, on the last episode, he said he was 28 or 29 years old. Bitch, I thought you was older than me. And I'm not even being shady. I thought you were older than me. Because I'm sitting up here just, I just turned 31 last Wednesday. So, I did not know that he was younger than me. I always assumed everybody's older than me. Whatever, but you know. But he meeting up with this photographer. And from what I saw in the comment section, he, do, he does great work. So I'm just like, okay, Reese, get your get your bag, get your thing, have it more than double space, you know what I mean? Have a single space, have more than like two paragraphs, two sentences, not even paragraphs, because Markel, from what they said, he handled paragraphs. So I have like more than two sentences in here and just do what you got to do, you know what I'm saying? So and make sure your words are spelled correctly and all of that shit, you know what I'm saying? So big ups to a big mama thing, you know what I mean? And on top of that, let me just say this again because there's a lot that I forgot to mention last episode. When Reese, when Markel said, what is your talent? What do you do? And Reese said, the brand is my talent. This is what I do. If it wasn't for my talent, you wouldn't even have a platform to sell your books. I'm like, uh -huh. Reese, why do you keep reading Markel? And Markel, why do you keep letting yourself get read by Reese? Like, girl, you need to... You shady and catty as fuck. I can give you that much. But for whatever reason, you cannot read Reese. I don't know why you can't, but you can't read Reese. So I'm, I'm going to pray for you. My heart goes out to you, Markel. It really does. We're going to get into Trey and we're going to get into Kane. So they meet up at a taco spot. Sound like my type of party because I don't need all that caviar and, and, and quiche and pate and all that nasty rich people shit. Give me some basic ass tacos and I'll call it a goddamn day. And I drink a RC Cola with it or a knee high. You know, I'm real country. Real ghetto, real hood. I like all this hood ghetto country shit. That's what I like. But we're going to get into that another time, though. They talk about the lingerie party and how, you know, they're talking about their outfits. They're talking about everything that they got going on with it. Ooh, shit. Talking about everything they got going on with it. And um, he said that he invited everybody except for one person. Trey said, who? And Kane said, take a wild guess. And we already know who he didn't invite. Who did he invite? He did not invite David Mann. He did not invite David Mann, period. He did not invite Mr. Brown from Madea. He did not invite him, point blank, period. He did not invite T.D. Jakes. He did not invite Creflo Dollar. He did not. And that's a good thing that he did not. We don't need Pastor Gray up here. Point blank period, we don't need him. Because what he was going to do is he's going to come in there acting like he a southern bear, like he don't even do this type of shit. And if he did come in, he was going to come in dressed up like he was finna be in a casket probably. That would be his damn lingerie suit. A casket lingerie would have been his forte, to be quite honest. So, yeah, he didn't need to be there. So, next thing you know, um, Dior's name come up. And I remember early on in the season when um, I think Reese was in Galveston, I believe, or Houston or whatever he was at. He was sitting there talking to Howard and Dior, and um, they mentioned 
Trey's name and it was nothing but shade coming across. And from what Trey said, him and Dior used to be friends, but now it's a bunch of shade being thrown from both Dior's side and Trey Howard's side. And let me tell y'all something. Trey Howard um, agreed to do an interview with me. And I'm going to do one with him. If it's going to be, it's either going to be just me doing the interview or probably me and giving you the real tea. Because me and giving you the real tea going to be doing a lot of interviews together with this cast. Um, and before I get into the rest of this show, me actually, me and giving you the real tea was supposed to interview Antonio together. Because we were supposed to do it earlier that day, but it didn't happen. And by the time Antonio was ready to do the interview, I was already tied up with my family at the time, so I couldn't do it. But what I will say, the interview was a damn kiki. I liked it. And Antonio looked goddamn good in that motherfucking interview. He had his man breast the fuck out. I want the... This is not X-rated TV. We ain't gonna go into what I wanted to do, but he looked damn good. I'm, probably was best for me not to be there. But anyway... <laughs> You know, I was supposed to been a part of that interview, but Antonio did agree to do one with me. So because I did not get to do it with Terrence, I might just do this one by myself. But the rest of them will be with Terrence. It just depends on what they want to do. But um, they obviously got tea. And according to Rock, he saw the shit going on on social media where, you know, um, Howard said the girls are looking a bit stuffed. And Dior agreed. And then, you know, um, Kane was basically trying to get Trey to talk to Dior. He like, because y'all used to be cool, y'all were friends at one point. Do you think that y'all can have a conversation about this shit? And so it was kind of like this. He was like, I don't have a problem. They got a problem. I can sit down and have a conversation with him. And I felt like, you know, that was very mature of him. Because I know there are people that have tried to get me to talk to motherfuckers. I used to be friends with. I said, no, fuck that bitch. That bitch dead. I don't want to talk to that motherfucker. Fuck that motherfucker. That's how I feel. But at the end of the day, it's always nice to see somebody be mature enough to want to have a conversation. Come to find out, Trey and Rock got history with Trey Howard. You know, Rock was flirting with him. Trey said, you know, Howard didn't know what he was. So, Howard, you didn't know if he was a top or a bottom. Because right now, you're giving me a little bit of, hey, girl, I'm a bottom. Look what you're giving me. So, it looks like you've been knowing that all the time. But, you know, when you first start off, you don't really know what the fuck you want. But to be honest, I already knew what the fuck I, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know. And still don't know. Because one day, I'd be here. Next minute, I'd be there. Then some days, I'd be like this. So, you never know. You never really know. But that's how the episode ended. I was like, I thought the damn party was going to be tonight. But you know, chasing reality got a habit of putting shit in a, in a goddamn preview for next week and the shit don't even be there. Y'all better not be playing with me because I'm going to drag the shit out of y'all. Y'all know I will. I don't give a fuck how much I love y'all. Okay? Real talk. But you know, that's all I got to say about this um episode of Chasing Dallas. It was pretty good. Um... Yeah, it was pretty good. And, um, yeah, Reese is growing on me. Big Mama thing growing on me. Reese Khan is growing on me. You know what I mean? So I can I can give him that much. He better not piss me off, though, anymore. But with that being said, you guys, this is my review on Chasing Dallas. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Do whatever you see fit. Follow me on Instagram at Scotty underscore by underscore nature. Um, there's my PayPal and there's my cash app to donate to this channel so we can make this channel better for all your ratchet ass needs. Whether it be for commentary on ratchet reality shows such as this, hot topics or all things that's real talk. That being said, you guys, your boy is out of here. And tonight, I'm going to review Marriage Boot Camp. I got to catch up on the second episode right quick before the third one come on. But with that being said, you guys, I'm out of here. Till next time, peace out.